Lessons learned. IFR from Tampa Peter O'Knight Airport to Ocala, Florida. Hi, my name is Carl Valeri, and I blog at expertaviator.com. Today, I want to take you along on an educational and entertaining flight from Tampa's Peter O'Knight Airport to Ocala, Florida. This is a first in a series of videos to entertain, educate, and promote your passion for flying. In this video, you will discover some advantages and disadvantages of obtaining your instrument clearance in the air after departing VFR, how to navigate around Class Bravo airspace while waiting to receive your IFR clearance, transitioning from VFR to IFR and some clearances that can be confusing, how to operate using the new control tower at Ocala Airport, and a great place to have breakfast or lunch at the Tailwind Cafe. Links to the websites and other information discussed in this video are available at expertaviator.com. The purpose of our flight was to practice filing an IFR flight plan and flying in the air traffic control system. Additionally, we simply wanted to enjoy the scenery and find a good airport restaurant for breakfast since we were both hungry. We called ahead to the Tailwind Cafe to verify the restaurant was open. From past experience, we have departed for a $100 hamburger, only to find the restaurant recently closed. Luckily, this cafe has been open for a long time because it not only relies on airport traffic, but locals to come visit. After obtaining a weather briefing, we filed IFR for two reasons. First, the practice, and additionally, since Ocala was marginal VFR due to low visibility. At our departure airport, we could have picked up our IFR clearance, but from past experience this can take some time and the weather along our route was VFR. We departed runway 4 and climbed to 1,000 feet. After clear of traffic at Peter O'Knight Airport, we called Tampa Approach Control and stated, Tampa Approach Cessna 12345 is off Peter O'Knight, ready to copy IFR to Ocala. Tampa Approach responded, Cessna 12345 Squawk 3537 maintain VFR at or below 4,000. We read back maintain VFR at or below 4,000, squawking 3537. After the transmission, I could see my student turn to me with a puzzled look, which started a discussion as to whether we could climb to 4,000 now. The answer is no, because we were still operating below the Class Bravo airspace, and we have not been cleared into Class Bravo. Even though we requested an IFR clearance, we are still operating VFR. Additionally, we never heard the key words, cleared in the Class Bravo airspace. Shortly afterwards, we received additional clearance from air traffic control. Cessna 12345 maintain 1,600 cleared into Bravo airspace. We read back up to 1,600 cleared into Bravo and began our climb. Now we are cleared into Bravo airspace, but still must maintain VFR until we receive our IFR clearance, which comes shortly after we climb to 1600, and we hear the following communication. Cessna 12345, you are ready to copy your clearance? Cessna 12345, ready to copy. Cessna 12345 is clear to Ocala Airport as filed, maintain 5000. We respond, Cessna 12345, as filed, maintain 5000. ATC comes back and says, Cessna 12345, climb now to 5,000. And we respond, climb to 5,000, Cessna 12345. So we are on our way and in the IFR system. The flight was smooth and uneventful. But with the approaching cold front, I was glad we filed IFR, since a haze layer reduced our visibility. As we approached Ocala, we listened to ATIS on our number two radio and began to set up the GPS for a visual to runway 18. Even though it would be a visual approach, it's a good idea to load an approach into the GPS for additional confirmation that we are landing on the correct runway. The control tower at Ocala was completed in May of 2011 and was put in place due to the demand for the local horse trade and in hopes of increasing business now that it has a control tower. The tower's simple but attractive design keeps this with the style of the area. While approaching Ocala, air traffic control told us to expect visual to runway 18. 
We said we had the runway in sight, and they subsequently told us to contact Tower. We contacted Tower by saying, Ocala Tower, Cessna 12345 is with you for visual 18. Ocala Tower does not have radar, so they asked us if we would prefer a left or right downwind to runway 18. We asked for the right downwind and kept it in tight so I could bring this video of the tower and the runway to you. After landing, we turned off the runway and were asked to contact ground. After clearing the runway and completing our after landing checklist, we then contacted ground, stating, Ocala Ground, Cessna 12345, is clear of 18, and we would like to taxi to the restaurant. The controller asked, are you familiar? We then stated that it's been a long time since we've been here and need directions. The controller then told us to taxi down Alpha to Alpha 3, and the restaurant is on the ramp near the shell sign. After entering the ramp, I began looking for the landmark FBO frequency, but luckily, there was someone on the ramp to guide us into the parking space. After securing the aircraft, we walked into the landmark aviation FBO, past a unique display of jockey figurines lining the concrete walkway. Inside, we were greeted with a warm smile from the person behind the counter, who took our tail number and told us to enjoy our lunch. No landing fee if you eat at the cafe. The Tailwind Cafe is a charming little restaurant and brings back many memories of my bringing students here to have lunch on one of my many cross countries I did to this airport. One of the wonderful things about flying is that we can pick up and go to these small out of the way places for lunch in under an hour. One interesting item which adds to the nostalgic charm is the many wings which flight crews have given to the cafe to put on a cork board behind the cower. We enjoyed a leisurely breakfast and watched airplanes out the large window, highlighted by a hawker jet pulling up to the entrance before we paid our bill. So we were ready for our return flight. We filed IFR and asked for a direct to destination on the way back to Peter O'Night. We started the engine, listened to ATIS, and asked for our clearance from ground control. Since there's no clearance delivery at Ocala, we use ground control frequency for our clearance. We received the clearance. Clear to Tampa Peter O'Night Airport via Ocala Victor 481 Dades Direct. Maintain 2000, expect 4000, 10 minutes after, squawk 3845. This is different from our original file flight plan, so I put it into my flight planning and charting software called ForeFlight and noticed only a few minutes extra in our planned flight time, with us still landing with over three hours of fuel, so we're good to go. When you are given a reroute, you should always recheck your fuel burn to determine if you will need any extra fuel. Also one of the benefits to using an electronic charting system such as ForeFlight is the ability to simply enter the new route and you will get the, na get the navigation log with the current winds provided you are connected to the internet. The other important thing to remember is you must know, na excuse me, you must now program your flight into your GPS database. There are of course a few options in our case. We could have simply tuned the VOR frequency, then dialed in the radio, departed, and then put the remainder of the flight plan in our GPS while we're in the air. There are two reasons I caution against operating this way. First, we've filed our flight plan with a suffix slash golf. We must be able to quickly navigate direct to a waypoint if given an ATC clearance to do so. Second, we should be concentrating on flying the plane while in flight and looking for traffic instead of with our head down looking at the GPS and programming a route we could have entered in the ground. Since today there are two pilots in the airplane, my job was to program the GPS and my flying partner was to fly. We taxied out to the runway 18 and were soon after given a clearance for takeoff. One thing you should review if you have simply been using your GPS for direct to navigation is how to activate a leg in a flight plan. This may sound trivial, but while you're being radar vectored during a climb, 
is the worst time to be experimenting with how to activate a leg. If I asked you to explain how to activate a leg in your GPS and you cannot immediately respond, I encourage you to get out your manual and review the procedure. Keep in mind there are maybe a few ways to activate a leg in your GPS, similar to the GNS430 we use. If you have a simulator on your computer, I encourage you to get it out after this video and practice activating a leg in your flight plan. Interestingly, you would be surprised how many people don't know how to activate a leg in their electronic navigation system, so don't feel bad if you don't remember. Simply review it now. After we've reviewed how to activate a leg in our GPS, in case we were told to intercept the airway, we were given the simple clearance to climb to 5,000 and direct Dades. At least we were prepared to intercept the airway. Oh, it was a beautiful day to fly. Learned a few things on this flight to Ocala for breakfast, and I hope my sharing this flight with you today has been both informative and entertaining. If you are instrument rated and current, I encourage you to file an IFR flight plan next time you fly, even if it's a clear VFR day. First, by actually filing excuse me, by actually flying in the system and talking to air traffic control, you'll gain much experience talking to ATC, which is something we all could benefit from. Second, when we file a flight plan, whether IFR or VFR, and you have a problem and land off airport, search and rescue will first begin searching along your route. Even better, if you pick up the IFR clearance and operate in the system, it's like having flight following at all times and you're sure that search and rescue will be dispatched immediately by ATC if you were to land off-field. Third, if you're flying IFR and you see a cloud, you don't have to alter course due to VFR cloud clearances. You're flying IFR. I file an IFR flight plan every time I fly, even if I don't pick up my clearance. With the new electronic flight flags and planning software such as ForeFlight, I can quickly put my flight plan in my iPad get a weather briefing, and file my flight plan, all with a few simple keystrokes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this flight. Again, my name is Carl Valeri. I'm an aviation blogger and co-host of the Stuck Mike Avcast. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on this flight to Ocala and the Tailwind Cafe. I have links to the images shown on this video at expertaviator.com, where you can also find links to the airport restaurants and charts mentioned. This is the first in an educational series of videos I will be presenting where I take you along with me on a flight. My purpose is to both entertain and educate you. For a transcript of this video and links to the items mentioned in the video, visit expertaviator.com. You'll also find links to Stuck Mike Advocast, an aviation podcast about learning to fly, living to fly, and loving to fly. I hope to see you again soon. Clear skies and safe flying.